You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for hitting that play button. This is the Dave Bullis Podcast. Uh, you know, it, it's been a little while uh, since the last episode. Uh, I've just been busy with life and work and everything else. Um, that, that That's why I, I'm not doing it as regularly as I used to. But I'm going to try to get back in the groove of things. And uh, there's not really a lot of show notes, uh, or sorry, pre-show notes that I have to talk about. Uh, just that I'm doing the, the short film project. Uh, still scheduled to try to do that in September of October of this year. Uh, there's details in the show notes. I hope to be able to show you an animatic soon. Hopefully, um, you know, maybe get a little bit of money from crowdfunding. I'm not sure. And just see where we go from there. But other than that, there's nothing really uh, else to discuss. Uh, so in this next interview, I just want to pre, pre, uh, pre-note this by saying uh, I'm a little rusty and it shows. Uh, I don't know if uh, I, it was just how bad I, I, I sounded or maybe I, 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 I'm just that bad. I don't know. Um, but this interview was like extremely quick, uh, wasn't really that in-depth. So uh, it is what it is, right? <laughs> so uh, without further ado, on this week's episode of the podcast, I talked to a filmmaker who was the first graduate – of the Trauma Institute for the Gifted. Uh, She made the film, she directed and wrote the film B.C. Butcher when she was 17. Uh, Now she's going on to direct a ton of music videos, which we talk about. Um, She's also in uh, production right now of her second feature film, and she shoots everything on 16 millimeters. So she's, you know, throwing it back old school, Um, which, by the way, I I actually like. I like, you know, if you find a style, I say stick with it. Uh, and, you know, whether it's shooting on film or digital, uh, and, and I talk about that, too, because I think the film does give you certain things that digital doesn't. Uh, but either way, this is episode 221 with guest, Kansas Bowling. You're listening to the Dave Bullis Podcast. It's been funny because we've been trying to get a hold of each other uh, for for a while now. But see, it, it's hard because you live such an awesome life. Like every time I see your Instagram, you're out doing something really, really cool, a lot cooler than what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so well, my my my, ins- my Instagram just got permanently deleted yesterday. So, <laughs> well, why was that? I I made a post about um, uh, a new wave of fascism on the internet, and I got banned for hate speech. <laughs> Really? So th- did they even give you a warning, or they just immediately take you down? No, they just took me down. It was because I was coming in defense of James Gunn, this whole thing, and so everyone call it, started calling me a pedophile because it's like a new wave of mass hysteria where if you don't agree with someone, they're suddenly a pedophile. So now, I, yeah, I don't have any form of social media now. <laughs> yeah, because didn't it get banned before? Didn't, you, like, didn't like your Twitter or something, or didn't you have something and it got banned once before? Uh, no, I just had, they'd, like, always delete my posts and stuff, but now they just deleted my whole account. So now what are you going to do with that social media? Uh, just keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> just without, <laughs> without social media. I don't know, nothing really changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Well, well, you know the old saying, Kansas, if, if you don't do it on social media, it, it never really happened. Oh, no! Yeah, so, so, so see, that now, now we don't know what's, what's going to happen. See, you're such a cool person, and, and I'm not going to be able to keep up, keep up with your life anymore. So, but, because um, honestly, like, and that's what I wanted to get into in this interview. You know, you're out doing so many, like, cool projects and stuff like that. You know, I, I mean, you've directed, like, 20 music videos. You've directed, uh, you know, uh, directed a feature film. You're, you're, you're uh, a, a, in pre-production for the next one. So, you know, let's just get started with, you know, at the beginning, you know, how did you get started doing this whole, you know, filmmaking thing? Um, well, I made a feature film right when I got out of high school, just basically because I wanted to make movies and I thought it would be easier to just make one than to like go to film school and everything. And it would prove to be better for me. And I was right. I, I just, yeah. I just made I made um, the slasher cave woman slasher for trauma um, when I was seventeen. Well, I I mean I made it and then I uh, gave it to trauma, um, and then yeah and then from that I 
just gotten a lot of jobs and stuff. Like, people saw it. Like, it's... I mean, within the... Tr- it's not, like, a widely recognized film by any means, but within the sort of trauma community, it is. So, from that, I've gotten, like, music video offers, like, directing and a lot of acting stuff. And, you know, once I do one music video, I usually get another because someone saw it. And, you know, it's just kind of like a word of mouth sort of thing. So, that's how I got started. Yeah, you know, and, and by the way, that is a good idea, by the way, not to go to college. Um, Because trust me, I I made the mistake of going to college, and um, I remember I saw one of your posts one time about that, and uh, I I couldn't agree, I could not hit that love button fast enough, Kansas, because... uh, Oh yeah, uh, that that actually got deleted by Instagram too for hate speech. (laughs) (laughs) Because it says that, because I was like encouraging bad behavior or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) I I see, that's what I remember most about you, Kansas, is all your deleted social media posts. Uh, honestly, I, I think that's what it is. Um, but uh, but no, but you had a post there, and it, and it just was talking about college. And and honestly, I having gone and even worked at a college, I can tell you a lot of the, the students there. Uh, there's a there's a there's a good portion who should not be going to college. The only reason that they're going is because they're told that they have to go. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's a problem too that people can't really think for themselves. They're just doing what they're told to do. Yeah, and, and that's why I need Instagram to tell me these things and delete posts. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so uh, you know, as you're going out and you and you're getting these different jobs, you know, like what what are some of the strangest offers that you've gotten? Um, uh, I mean, I don't know, strangest. I, I mean, people always like try to get me to do porn and stuff. I don't know. I say no, of course. <laughs> but, Wait, really? I, well, yeah, you know, I don't know. I feel like that's pretty typical. <laughs> no one's ever asked me to do that. Usually people pay me to keep well, my clothes on. <laughs> I mean, for a girl, <laughs> especially in, like, the horror world. But I don't know. That's uh, I feel like that's not really an interesting answer. I don't know. People send me, like, really horrible scripts all the time where it's, like, the whole thing is just, like, a giant sex scene. They're like, no, but it's going to be, like, really artsy, I swear. And I'm just like, uh, yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that, that that I know what you mean. I like I have friends who who would do stuff like that, and I'm and I would just re- be reading the script, and I'm just like, I'm not even a girl, and you're creeping me out. Like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, that, I couldn't imagine a girl reading this or an actress reading this and being like, yeah, this this sounds like it's gonna be a great scene for a great movie. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it just seems like a facade for you know what I mean, and it's just, uh, it, it, so do, do people just like send you screenplays like all the time through email and stuff? Yeah. And, it, and it's just basically like, hey, Kansas, I, I, I want to cast you in this thing. Uh, and, it, and it just, and then you read it and it's just like, oh, this is just nothing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not all the time. I mean, I get some good scripts, too, sent to me. And, uh, you know, I, if I'm able to, I'll appear in those and stuff. So, yeah. So, so, so like, what are some of the better you know, scripts that you've gotten? Like, so what, what are some, like, the better pitches that you've gotten for things to do? Um, well, I'm acting in this one movie called The Electra Complex, um, which is directed by Jessica Janos, and it's starring me and Violet Paley, and we play these uh, two sex workers in the 90s. Uh, it's it's one of like the most well-written screenplays. Well, it's actually the most well-written screenplay I've ever gotten sent to me, and probably one of like my favorite screenplays I've ever read. It's really, really good, uh, so that should be coming soon. We're... We're still shooting that one right now. And see that that that's actually good. You know that it's good that that some actually good. You know you don't you don't get too many crazy offers. And uh, so w- when you actually read the screenplay and you said it was one one of the most well written screenplays you've ever read. And mm-hmm. you know you, you know, like what were some of the, was it just the prose? Was it the characters? I mean, what really stood out for you? Um. It, well, it's just like a very unique story because I I hate you know when you're watching a movie and you know exactly what's going to happen once you find out what the conflict is you know yeah um it's just like a it's unique and it's personal and it's not trying it it's like it's very um it's subversive without trying to be edgy um and it's not trying to be anything else it's just it's very genuine 
So, hey. when, when, so when you read a script like that, does it? Do you do you try to take some? Actually, I know you're a screenwriter too. Do you take that and try to like you know? I don't want to say mimic that, but do you try to say you know you know what I mean? Like you know what I'm trying to say? Like do you try to bring um, something like that? You know what I mean? I get what you're trying to say, but I I don't know. I, I appreciate other people's styles, and I appreciate when people have their own voice, and I'm I feel like I've been able to develop my own voice, so I don't really um, feel the need to mimic other people's. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean like, you know, um, yeah, exactly. I, I, I didn't want to use the word mimic. I, I, it's a bad I, bad word. I, I meant more like... Um, yeah, just I pull inspiration from. Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, something like that. Uh, yeah, no, it's... Um, I, no, I, I, I feel pretty confident with my voice and my writing, so I just don't ever find myself doing that. So you're actually uh, working on another feature film right now, which is your second feature film. Uh, is there any details you go into? Um, I just shot a scene with Caroline Williams, which was really exciting. Um, yeah, the, I'm I'm directing this feature. Should the feature should be done by the end of the year? I'm not sure when it'll come out though. But it's a it's like a a, a Mondo movie which is a forgotten genre. So I'm making a current day Mondo, which I'm very excited about. So like, you like, obviously you can't say anything about like the plot or anything, right? Um, I, I mean, I, I know what you, I, I know you probably can't, but I thought I'd ask. Um, but, um, you know, you're shooting on eight, uh, on super eight, you know, no, it, on, on 16 millimeter. Oh, 16 millimeter. I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, I, I, so is that something that you want to continue to do is to shoot on 16 millimeter? Yeah, of course. I, I so, mean, I always, I always like shooting on film. I've never shot on 35 before because I've just been never been able to because it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, shoot, I shoot on Super 8 and 16 millimeter all the time. Yeah, yeah, that, those uh, 35 millimeter prices are, are you th you'd, be, you'd think they'd be going down, right, Kansas? Like, you'd think that since, you know, they might have some extra stock, it might be going down, but no. But no. Well, I mean, a, a lot of big movies still shoot on 35, so makes sense. Yeah, you know, everyone, no, people don't really realize that how many movies are still shot on film, but a vast majority of them are. I mean, not, not sorry, not majority, but a, a large number of mainstream movies are still shot on film yeah yeah it, it, it's just you know when I, when I was going up to like these different places and you know different film labs and stuff like that um you know a couple even a couple of years ago some of them were already starting to get into the digital world um mm -hmm. i i know what you mean like honestly when i see a movie like from the 70s and the 80s it has that certain aesthetic look to it you know what i mean and mm -hmm. and and i i really do miss that you know what i mean it, it, yeah it, sometimes i think it looks too i think with digital it, it has a tendency to look too clean, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a timeless look to film that you can't recreate with digital. So so when you're one, so what are you, some of your favorite movies to watch? Uh, my favorite movie is F for Fake, the Orson Welles film. Okay. Um, another one is Don Juan, or If Don Juan Were a Woman, the Roger Vadim movie. Um, also Midnight Cowboy. Um, the Fulci movie, Don't Torture a Duckling. Uh, yeah, those are, those are like my top movies. Cool. I, you know, I, I just want to just ask you that because, you know, you, you always get to see what the influences of people are. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? So, so you know, as you're making your second feature film, you actually, you know, crowdfunded. I, and I apologize, by the way. I know we're kind of jumping around here. Um, okay. <laughs> I apologize. It's fine. Uh, you know, I just kind of uh, – I have a list of questions, and I'm kind of going all, all over the place with it. But, uh, you know, and I sometimes I don't even ask them. Um, sometimes we already ask it. We already answer it in, a, in, in another way. But uh, so, so, you know, you actually used Instagram to sort of crowdfund the second movie because, you you know, you were asking for a 16-millimeter – uh, hey, if anybody wants to donate, you know, you'll become a producer on the film. Um, you know, since your social media is now gone, do you think you'll ever get anything back? Like, do you think you'll ever go back to uh, tw uh, Twitter or Facebook or anything? Um, I don't know. Maybe. I haven't, I haven't really thought about it yet. I'm just kind of, I'm just working on a lot of stuff right now, so I'm not really thinking about it. I'm, uh, I'm like directing three music videos right now. Um, when I hang up, I'm actually about to go 
on my way to drop off some film and um yeah i'm preparing for a shoot in miami this weekend um and then i'm acting in a big project coming up so and then also doing my feature um i don't know it's it's definitely not like the most important thing in the world so there's i don't know i'm just focusing on my work right now (laughs) So, so what are some like tips that you could give to people for for directing? Because you know, you've directed like twenty music videos, you know, you've directed uh, you know two feature films now. So you know, like what are because I mean, you you've done more than a lot of people I know who are you know like you know that are twice your age that are in their forties. You know, you've directed more things. So you know, what are some of the you know tips that you could that you could sort of give that the different people listening about you know just just directing uh, actors, directing the camera, stuff like that. Um, well, directing is just really just about confidence um and if you if you're confident that you have uh, a distinct voice or vision or whatnot then you should just be able to start directing because there's not really much to it besides just telling people what you want to see there's really actually like nothing else to directing besides that everything technical i mean you can pretty much just learn along the way um but it's just you know, if you um, if you see a film in your head, or if you see you know a shot in your head, or whatever, whatever you want to make, music video, anything, just go out and make it, and don't doubt yourself. So it's kind of like you know um, what the Fairley Brothers said, where where most directing is like watching TV. Um, I guess so. I guess I think about that um so i yeah i know i'm sorry i just kind of threw it out there but you know just like what you were saying you know you see it in your head and for them they were just basically you know watching you know uh, watching it on you know video village or what have you or a monitor um and then basically you know just they can control the tv though you know stop let's try it this way you know mm-hmm. you know you know, you know what i mean yeah yeah um yeah basically um it's definitely not something you need to go to school for or anything. Just, yeah, it's basically just about confidence because you have to be in charge of a set and stuff and you have to be confident in yourself um, that, you know, that, you know, what your vision is unique and, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because we, we actually have two mutual friends. Um, the first one is Lloyd Kaufman. Okay. Um, and and, and you, I mean, obviously, everyone knows Lloyd. Uh, the, it's funny. The first time I ever met him face to face, Kansas, he actually told me uh, I was covered in fake blood, and mm-hmm. uh, he's like, "Hey, don't touch me." And I thought, <laughs> and I forgot for a minute I was covered in fake blood, but I, I thought for a second he just didn't want to touch me, which is normal, you know. Most people have that, and most people have that uh, reaction. And the second person is Alex Ferrari, because you were actually on the Indie Film Hustle podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that that was actually that podcast did episode did really well actually yeah it, it's uh yeah alex is a really really good guy um and uh you know that that, that podcast to I me mean, it's just going just going gangbusters but um mm-hmm. yeah no i just i just wanted to mention that because you know it, it's you know i met those two uh through networking and i even met you through the you know through the power of social media uh, mm-hmm. the, power of the internet you know just talking to people and and i think you know just you know sort of going back to as we kind of tie this all in together because i know you have to go um just you know, going out there and putting yourself out there and trying to network in person and, and and you know, you know through email wherever you can, it does a lot more for you because by the time you get out of college, because that doing that by the time you and versus going to college, you'd have four years of taking classes, etc. You got and you got a degree, mm-hmm. but it's also four years where you're actually not out there making anything. Yeah, exactly. So cool. Uh, so Kansas, do you have anything that you want to say to sort of put a period at the end of this whole conversation? Um, uh, it could be anything, any uh, secrets of life, secrets of the universe, uh, winning lottery numbers, um, anything. Um, uh, <laughs> oh my God, wait, sorry. Can we, can we walk around my house look for some inspiration? Let's see. <laughs> uh, oh man, I don't know. Phil Spector's innocent. <laughs> all right, all right, and that, 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 that will be the way we end it. <laughs> <laughs>
is, okay. is, is with that. And uh, <laughs> that, that, that might be the most profound, pro, pro, uh, prolific thing that anyone has said on this podcast. <laughs> but uh, so Kansas, where can people check you out online? Um, I have a website, kansas-bowling.com, and you can see a bunch of music videos I've directed. Um, and there's also links to my first movie, BC Butcher. Um, also, I have a I have contact on there, uh, public email address, and uh, PO box. If anyone wants to send me some 16 millimeter, that would be widely appreciated. But do not send her bad scripts. I mean, you can, but it's not. You're not going to get the reaction you want. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so those are the two rules. Uh, I, I guess I was going to say no bad scripts and and no porn, but. Um, so, so, so just no porn then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kansas, I'm going to, by the way, everyone, I'm going to link to everything Kansas and I talked about in the show notes at Kansas.com. <laughs> um, and, uh, I will link to all, all of her music videos and stuff like that. Sweet. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Kansas, thank you so much for coming on. All right, cool. Thanks so much. Find Dave at DaveBullis.com. Please make sure to subscribe and share the podcast.